Today I'm going to tell you about an incident that took place in one of the cities of Costa Rica, called Punta Arenas, a place chosen by thousands of people to spend their holidays on the beautiful beaches this place offers. Costa Rica is a very popular tourist destination, but unfortunately, this story did not have a happy ending. I will. On July 18, 2020, Maria Luisa Cedeno arrived at the La Mancha Inn Hotel in Manuel Antonio, located in the Costa Rican province of Punta Arenas. She arrived with her beloved companion, Mafalda, a small dog that accompanied her everywhere and whom she treated like her own daughter. On the first day, nothing out of the ordinary happened. Maria Luisa went to the beach, had lunch at a restaurant, and drank a little alcohol everything that vacationers usually do. But the next day, everything changed. At exactly 4.30 p.m., Maria Luisa requested a bottle of wine, some mineral water, and two glasses to be brought to her room. It's worth noting that the woman hadn't told anyone she was expecting company. Everyone around was certain that she needed some time alone. Throughout the entire day and evening, there were no signs of movement from her room. The next day, on July 20th, hotel staff tried to contact her, but there was no response. Earlier, one of the staff members had spoken with Maria Luisa, and she had shared that she lived alone, having recently separated from her partner. She confessed that she wasn't feeling very well, and was traveling only with her little dog, Mafalda. Given that it had already been several months since the official start of the pandemic, she mentioned that it had affected her especially her mental health, which had been deteriorating. Considering everything she had gone through in her life, she just needed some rest. So the hotel staff decided to enter the room to conduct a routine check, just in case. The front door was locked from the inside. They then decided to check if there was access through the door leading to the inner courtyard. This room had an additional exit because it was designed for guests with pets, they would open the door to the courtyard so the dog could go outside to relieve itself. When the staff approached this exit, they found the door half open. As they stepped inside, they were met with a horrible smell and immediately saw bloodstains in various parts of the room. The dog was alive. She was lying in a corner, trembling with fear, keeping her distance from the staff, perhaps because she was either traumatized or extremely frightened. On the bed lay a human figure, motionless and wrapped in a sheet. This was how the lifeless body of Maria Luisa Chedeño was discovered. Maria Luisa Chedeño was an anesthesiologist and an exceptionally respected specialist in her field. At the time of her death, she was 43 years old and served as the head of the Department of Anesthesiology and Recovery at Sima Hospital in Escazú. Her colleagues loved her dearly. During the early days of the pandemic, Maria Luisa was deeply dedicated to her profession and wanted to help patients in those challenging times. Being a medical professional, she assisted her loved ones significantly. She arranged medical insurance, helped with doctor appointments, and was like the right hand of the Cedeno family. Whenever she could help, she was always there. Her parents lived in the city of Fortuna de San Carlos, so it was not always possible for her to be with her family constantly. Friends described Maria Luisa as a strong, intelligent, and beautiful woman who loved to travel both within Costa Rica and abroad. Her reputation was truly impeccable. When the news of her violent death reached Costa Rica and her own family, the impact was devastating. Who could have wanted to kill someone like Maria Luisa? The mystery of this case began from the very first moment when the staff discovered the lifeless body. The crime scene was bewildering, not only because of the brutality Maria Luisa had faced. The intrigue began with the access to the room she had rented in this hotel. Let's move on to the details discovered in this case, in room 3 of the hotel in Costa Rica. First, let's talk about access. In this hotel, as in most hotels worldwide, Magnetic key cards are tracked for use in the rooms. In other words, every time someone enters a room, the card used is registered, along with the specific key code. This way, it is possible to find out whether it was a guest 
or a hotel employee. In the case of Maria Luisa's murder, there were no records of any keys being used that didn't belong to her. It was only revealed that she had entered her room the previous evening, and no one else had entered since. Obviously, since there was a sliding glass door at the back, someone could have entered through it. This door was always locked from the inside, so only a guest could have opened it and left it unlocked. But since it was a sliding door, not equipped with a magnetic key system, there were no records of any entry through the courtyard. It could have happened that Maria Luisa let someone in through this door or left it unlocked, and someone entered and killed her. Since the door was found ajar when the hotel staff arrived, the most likely hypothesis was that someone had seen Maria Luisa at the hotel in the past few days, entered her room through the courtyard, murdered her, and left the same way. At that moment, this seemed to be the most logical version of events. After the body was discovered, the hotel staff called the police. When they examined the crime scene, it didn't take a thorough analysis to establish that Maria Luisa Chedeño had indeed been murdered. Her body was severely damaged. It was obvious that she had been tortured and that whoever did this was filled with rage. Forensic experts arrived at the scene to collect evidence, determine the cause of death, and analyze every detail in the hope of finding the perpetrator. It must be said that the level of brutality was so high that the authorities recommended that the Chedeño family hold the funeral with a closed casket. The autopsy, conducted some time later, revealed bite marks in several places on the body and two broken fingernails, indicating that Maria Luisa had tried to defend herself. Another detail that emerged during the autopsy was that the killer had washed the body. In other words, after the murder, he moved Maria Luisa to the bathroom. According to the forensic expert, the woman had been killed in the bedroom, on the bed. This was evident from the large amount of blood. From there, the person carried her body to the bathroom, washed it, then dried it, wrapped it in a sheet, and placed it back on the bed. This was exactly how the hotel staff later found Maria Luisa's body. Despite the fact that the killer washed the body, possibly trying to eliminate evidence, hiding the traces of the crime was almost impossible, as there was blood everywhere, on the floor, the walls, the curtains, and the bed. This further convinced investigators that the attack had been incredibly brutal. The experts took photographs and collected as much physical evidence as possible. After this, the body was sent for an autopsy, and the police began questioning the hotel staff, as well as guests who might have heard something. Judging by what was found at the crime scene, Maria Luisa must have screamed loudly, and her dog would have been barking. Yet. No one reported hearing any screams throughout the entire night. Although the hotel was almost empty due to the pandemic, a few staff members were still working, and the hotel's owner, Harry Bowden, was always present, living there with his husband, Danilo. Furthermore, he had allowed some trusted friends to stay at the hotel since they were facing financial difficulties. This was also done because the hotel was never crowded during the pandemic so renting out rooms to friends did not result in any financial loss for him. In Maria Luisa's room, they found a bottle of wine that she had ordered from room service, and two glasses. Later, when examining the victim's mobile phone, it was discovered that she had sent a photo of the two glasses to a friend, but there was no mention in the message that she was with someone or expecting anyone in her room. She also sent an audio message to the same friend, Mito, you have to see how amazing this hotel is. Mafalda is the queen of this place. I mean, they treat us so well. I paid for the all-inclusive package, which costs an extra $100, and they bring me everything. Not just drinks, but also strawberries, pineapples, anything I want. And for Mafalda, they bring different treats and water. You can't imagine how great it is here. I mean, I love it. I'm thrilled. I danced with the bartender, with another guy, and even with the owner's assistant. By the way, the owner is Dutch, so everything is super cool. Mito, I'm paying 155,000 colognes per night, and with the all-inclusive package, I can order dinner from any place I want, and they bring it to me. Of course, 
The hotel is a bit shabby, or rather, it's somewhat run down because they have very few staff. The same girl who serves coffee also takes care of the hotel grounds. But I don't care. I really like it here. It's a fantastic place. Later, when officers questioned Maria Luisa's friends and relatives to find out if she had any obvious enemies, the authorities learned that she always ordered two glasses, even when she was completely alone. This was done so she could pour alcohol into one glass and water into the other. Therefore, this confirms that the woman was alone and not expecting anyone. And here we return to the first hypothesis. The attacker must have been someone who saw Maria Luisa at the hotel, noticed the back door was open, and attacked her. But at the same time, so much brutality seemed to come from someone who held deep hatred toward her, someone who was extremely angry with her, which was hard to explain. In such situations, it seemed that this was a murder committed by someone who really knew the woman and wanted to make her suffer. But at the same time, there was no evidence that Maria Luisa was with anyone, or that she had met someone. Another detail from the autopsy confirmed that the woman had also been sexually assaulted. Additionally, there were signs of strangulation, bruises on her cheeks, lips, arms, and chest. As a result of the analysis, the autopsy findings, and the interviews with relatives, friends, and people who were in the hotel, the authorities concluded that this attack could not have been committed by just one person. Since no one heard Maria Luisa scream, they suggested that there were at least two attackers who subdued her in a way that kept her completely under control. There was even speculation that there could have been a third person, as the woman was subjected to severe abuse. According to this theory, two attackers held Maria Luisa while the third assaulted her. This idea is supported by the fact that there were no signs of ropes or anything that indicated the victim had been tied up. Officers also hypothesized that these people might have put something in her mouth to keep her from screaming or to muffle her cries so they could commit the assault without anyone hearing. The cause of death was determined to be a traumatic brain injury, which could have been inflicted in several ways. A severe blow to the head, injury during disrobing, since there were signs of fractured vertebrae, or through the use of an object or a hard fall to the floor. In general, what the attackers did to Maria Luisa Chedeño was an atrocity, something senseless and with no obvious motive. Finding the first suspect did not take long, primarily because this man, who was living at the hotel, had multiple fresh wounds on his body. Wounds that resembled scratches and marks from someone trying to defend themselves. This was the focus of the investigation. The suspect was Teodoro Herrera Martinez, an exotic dancer who worked in nightclubs in the city, and as I mentioned earlier, was staying at the hotel at the time of the murder. This person was taken into custody while efforts were made to establish his connection to the case. His footprints were compared with those found at the crime scene, and two of them matched footprints located in front of the bed in the bedroom on the black porcelain floor. Shortly after that, a second suspect was apprehended, Luis Carlos Miranda, a man with a degree in business administration. He was arrested when a hotel guard reported seeing him at night, walking through the corridors with the first suspect, Teodora Herrera. And since Teodora had already been detained, the police had to question Luis Carlos to determine whether there was any connection between him and the case. Moreover, tests revealed that his dental records matched the bite marks found on Maria Luisa's body. Some hotel staff testified that they had seen Maria Luisa talking with Luis Carlos, and, on one occasion, with Herrera as well, but in a casual manner. It didn't seem like they were friends or even knew each other well. They simply greeted each other and asked how things were. This might have been because the hotel had very few guests, so they may have crossed paths several times. Earlier I mentioned that the hotel owner had allowed two of his friends to stay on the property since they were struggling financially, and they were in the middle of the pandemic. Well, Luis Carlos and Teodora Herrera were exactly those friends. Seeing the matching footprints and bite marks from these two suspects, the most logical step for the police was to question Harry Bodden, the owner of the hotel, as I've mentioned before. 
During this interrogation, Harry revealed that on the night of the murder, specifically on July 19, 2020, he and his husband were having dinner in their apartment inside the hotel, along with the two suspects. After dinner, the four men went to a private pool. Harry then explained that the two suspects worked for him in exchange for living there. Luis Carlos handled the website's marketing, while Herrera worked as a chef and bartender. The hotel owner and these suspects were not close friends. But after they started living in the hotel, a year before the murder, they began to meet more and more frequently. They went to dinner, had lunches, spent time together. Slowly, a friendship formed between these four men. Although Harry Bodden cooperated and gave this interview in August 2020, he was arrested soon after. Two bite marks found on the victim's body also matched his dental records. And that's when the truth began to surface. The police confiscated the phones of all those arrested and found text messages between Luis Carlos and Harry Bodden. The messages were quite compromising. They contained dark fantasies. In these texts, Luis suggested to the hotel owner that they engage in intimate relations with a woman while he would watch. This conversation took place just a few days before the incident. The suspects claimed that these messages meant nothing and that they were just joking. But for the authorities, this was enough, along with the physical evidence, to keep them in custody while they built the case. The only one who wasn't arrested was the hotel owner's husband. There was no evidence against him, no text messages, no fingerprints, and the bite marks didn't match those found on the victim's body. The defense of the suspects tried to argue that the bite marks found on the body were inconclusive and that none of them were actually involved in the murder. But despite this, three men were charged with the murder of Maria Luisa. Before the trial began, Harry Bodden's lawyer, the owner of the hotel, requested that his client be released and placed under house arrest for two reasons. First, because the pandemic was raging in the country, and Harry, being 69 years old, was at high risk in prison. Second, he allegedly had trouble walking due to a recent knee surgery, and according to the defense, the man had been using a cane for a long time. When the trial began, he even appeared in a wheelchair. Thanks to this request, he was granted house arrest and allowed to return to the hotel where he lived. He couldn't leave the premises, but he had everything he wanted while waiting for the trial. He had staff, service, restaurants, and a pool. On September 13, 2022, the public trial of the suspects began where the testimonies against them were heard. It was then that the prosecution faced difficulties in proving Harry Bodden and Luis Carlos's involvement. Let's remember that text messages were found between them, and supposedly, there were bite marks on the victim's body. The issue was, bite marks can't definitively prove who committed the murder. They can only exclude certain suspects. So while all the hotel staff could be excluded, these two could not. However, this didn't mean that the bite marks were a perfect match for their dental records, meaning they weren't strong enough evidence. But when it came to Teodora Herrera, the evidence against him was much stronger. There was a blood trail. Furthermore, wounds were found on his body, which were determined to have been inflicted by Maria Luisa as she tried to defend herself. Her blood was found under his fingernails. Blood was also discovered on his shoes, watch, and mobile phone, all of which were found in his room during the search. Clearly, with this evidence, only Herrera could be convicted. He received 50 years in prison. But Harry Bodden and Luis Carlos Miranda were acquitted due to a lack of physical evidence. Many believe that these two men were still involved in the murder, especially since, on the day of the murder, the hotel's surveillance cameras mysteriously stopped working. This suggests that someone must have tampered with them. There was one more person under suspicion, the hotel security guard. But like the other two, he couldn't be arrested due to a lack of evidence. Strangely, after the murder, he left the country, even though the police had requested his presence at the trial as a witness. There's still so much about this case that makes you wonder if more people were involved. For instance, 
two guests even told the police that on the night of the murder, the power in the hotel went out for several hours. This could have been done on purpose. First, to shut off the surveillance cameras, and second, to disable the magnetic key cards. Another strange detail. Investigators only searched the hotel owner's private office nine days after the murder. That could have given him plenty of time to hide any evidence. Besides the text messages, the suspect's social media accounts were also analyzed, and here, conversations were found between them about certain fantasies that directly align with how Maria Luisa's body was discovered. Clearly, in the eyes of the law, Harry Bodden and Luis Carlos Miranda are innocent, and I'm not accusing them of anything. The only person still in prison for this murder is Herrera, who's also awaiting a new trial to see if his sentence might be reduced. And although this case is technically solved, the Cedeno family believes there's something more to it. Some kind of cover-up. Some sort of protection. They've even stated that the authorities returned Maria Luisa's blood-soaked belongings to them, which they don't understand. They wanted to preserve this evidence in case something else came to light. It's clear they're satisfied with Herrera's conviction, but they're far from content with the acquittal of Harry Bodden and Luis Carlos Miranda. Thanks for watching, friends. What do you think about this story? Share your thoughts in the comments. I'm always interested in your opinions. Subscribe to my channel. There's much more to come. See you next time.